So when you auditioned for this film, did you know exactly what you were getting into, or was it just another movie audition for you? It was just another audition to me. I had, I think, in that month, I generally had maybe five auditions a day. So it was just another movie, you know. And of course, it was just a low-budget horror movie when I first auditioned for it and tested for it. And I was literally, I was shooting within three weeks. So uh, I think from signing the contract to being in front of the film, I, uh, in front of camera, I was, it was two weeks. I didn't realize that it was going to be a lifetime journey with Freddie. That's what it turned out to be. So, yeah. so I love it. I mean, I love the first one. I love the second one. And I love the third one, especially. So, yeah. I, and it was great. You know, it was wonderful. What were some of your bigger challenges on set with the special effects? I know people talk about the tongue a lot. Yes, people often ask me what the, the difficult parts of the movie were. And uh, the worst actually was the tongue. Kim and I are in the, the cabana and we're going to have our big make out love scene and we're going to have sex, right? But um, all of a sudden, Freddie's going to take over my body and this big tongue's going to roll out. It just looks so foul and so pornographic <laughs> that it's like, you know, it's like literally, and I had this 12 inch tongue in my mouth for 12 hours. And I smoked at the time, so I couldn't have a cigarette or a drink of Coke, and people were throwing things at me. So I got a little cranky and bitchy on that one. Speaking of special effects, um, it must have taken a really long time to get that full body cast of yourself made. Can you tell us a little bit about that? My favorite scene in Nightmare on Elm Street, actually, is uh, the killing of Grady in his bedroom. It's the transformation where Freddy cuts my stomach out, comes out in one shot, comes out, kills Grady, and then turns back into me. And it was all done with puppets. We had no CGI then. So everything was practical. And what they do is they bury you in, in basically plaster. And I had two straws for my nose. Now this was from head to toe. I think about a lot of those things. I've done so many stunts that are just insane. Like people ask me what I thought about the snake, you know, and it's like I had a boa constrictor around my neck and they had two guys with guns to shoot it, you know, with darts in case it choked me to death. But, and I said to the handler, like, I'm like not very educated, right? So I'm like, how smart is this? Because I like feel really, you know, like we have a bond or something. I'm a kid. And he said, well, it's about 2% smarter than a blade of grass. You know, it's totally instinctive. So if you move the wrong way, it's going to choke you. Do you have any particular set memories with Robert that you'd like to share with us? People often ask me, well, how was it to meet Robert England? Do you know what I mean? Well, first of all, I knew Robert before. And the person who was really afraid to work with the other was Robert was nervous to work with me um, because I was actually a bigger star than he was at the time. So, um, and Nightmare on Elm Street 2 says starring Mark Patton with Robert England. Now, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 says starring Robert England with Heather Langenkamp. So, uh, but that's the way show business goes. You know, I mean, it all, it morphs in and out. And the primary scene between Robert and I that's most famous is, um, is the scene, you've got the body, I've got the brain. If you notice in all the Nightmare on Elm Street, movies, and Robert says this in my documentary, right? Um, Freddie is just vicious with girls. I mean, he's just hateful. I mean, like he's between Heather's legs with the claw, and I mean, just does these despicable things to women. And he adores me. And he's, he, like in that scene, he's basically making love to me, right, on the set. It's very intense, and he's romancing me, you know? And at one point he said, to me, because he's a real gentleman. He said, do you mind if I put the, blo the blade in your mouth? And my makeup artist, who is always your favorite person on a set, came, his name was Danny, and I loved him. And he, he came running across going, makeup, makeup, makeup. No, stop the camera. So he stops the camera, and he whispers in my ear, don't you dare let him put that glove in your mouth. Don't you dare let him put that blade in your mouth. It'll look like you're giving him a blowjob. <laughs> And so I said, no, don't. And he didn't. He just went around my mouth like this. But he was going to go in and out. So you ended up not being asked back for the third film. Um, what was your response to that? Did you ever go back and decide what happened to your character? Well, I've actually written a book, and it's called Jesse's Lost Journals. And I wrote this book because when I was new to the horror world and new to fans, I, you have to answer the same question over and over and over again, right? And you have to answer it diligently, right? Because it's the only time people are asking. Well, I started writing these status reports, and I thought if Jessie had a journal, like Nancy had a diary, which of course she didn't, but I found it anyway, and I wrote a journal. And it is the subtext of me making the movie. And the first half goes all the way through the end of the film. And then the second half of the book 
becomes what happened to Jesse after he gets off that bus. And in mine, he, he moved to New York and he became an artist and uh, he met me. And uh, we go to conventions together, me and Jesse, and then a lot of madness entails. And it's published at, uh, you can see it online. Actually, we sell copies of it, but you can see it online at uh, staticmass.net, which is a European film journal. And they published it for me. If they came to you and asked you to make a nightmare film, how would you do it? I actually have a really good idea because I think the franchise is worth a billion dollars. Warner Brothers has bought it, and they're kind of letting it sit fallow. But I think they should do something like, like uh, American Crime Story, like 10 story arcs with different people, with Freddy, but very dark. Like go back to the original. I don't like Funny Freddy. Um, you know, in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Fred, Robert's only in the movie 12 minutes. His presence is everywhere, but he's only actually on screen for 12 minutes. And it's this, his, his presence is very scary. So I'd like them to go back to sort of Dexter-ish kind of thing, but do 10 story arcs, you know, and like, he could be different places, and you can call me, I'll direct it. I've got a really good eye and a very creative imagination, so yeah. Well, there you have it. There you go. I can do it for you. Just call me.